about what? <laughs> Still spectacular and an excellent place to take a thumbnail shot for the for the video. Cutting through this English landscape, I can't help but be struck by how the externally perceived combination of undulating terrain, winding rivers and the constantly changing palette of colours gives way to an internal warm and nostalgic awakening in a way in which only these twin cylinder modern classic bikes can do. Somehow the same experience on a smooth and silky four or six cylinder machine would be akin to eating your favourite dish but without any seasoning. Drawing further upon the culinary metaphor we might be tempted to concede that a single cylinder thumper or a throaty V4 might go some way to redressing the imbalance by way of including the salt but not quite the pepper. Of course much of the old school character attributed to these parallel twins derives from the fact that both engines feature a 270 degree firing order where an asymmetric suck squeeze bang blow sequence bestows V twin rumble upon the parallels sported by the Super Meteor and the Bonnie. A modest twist of the throttle and both bikes bark out their refrain. A refrain forged from a collective memory of the heady 1960s, a memory cherished and nurtured by motorcyclists of a certain age. Which is not to say that the magic of such an experience is the exclusive birthright of us baby boomers. Gen X's and beyond can now enjoy the thrills of time warp biking rooted in the memories, real or imagined, of a bygone era when a simpler and fairer world gave rise to levels of private vehicle ownership previously undreamed of. In our present age, where the emancipation of working people seems under increasing threat from a crusade amongst Western governments to drive private motorists with modest incomes off the road, days like these, riding through the majestic trough of Boland, may become nothing more than a dream tenuously grasped on waking. There is this expression, if wishes were horses beggars would ride, and that's got its roots in 17th century literature. Well if wishes were motorcycles beggars would ride may yet become a 21st century metaphor for the decline of affordable wheeled independence. Freedoms associated with personally owned transport are most keenly felt by us, the motorcyclists. And I wonder if the ever increasing popularity of the modern classic genre and all things vintage owes much to an attenuated hive awareness in our motorcycling community that our days 
may be numbered. Let's face an unpalatable truth. The world's gone mad. The age of reason, compromise, consensus and prevailing goodwill has long since been parted company with in favour of a world where unreason, arrogance, entrenched positions and a prevailing contempt for others are the order of the day. I fear that these 21st century social and structural ills are beginning to define a new era. An era where individual rights and freedoms are being sacrificed at the altar of so-called progressive thinking, and where ever-increasing constraints on life are being slowly, stealthily, but surely ushered into our lives. I'm sure that at some point in a distant future, history will judge this era poorly. No doubt essays will be written by the erudite great and good, hypothesising upon what possible convergence of dark forces befell these our times, and how the rights of ordinary people were made utterly subordinate to the higher narrative of so-called enlightened yet increasingly malign entities. It seems that we are no longer a society to be valued, supported and celebrated for our free will and individual agency. Rather a population to be controlled and exploited by those who fear the quiet collective strength of communities. The progressive alienation of so-called inalienable rights finds expression in all walks of life and across all communities including the motorcycling community, which is of course our primary concern. Now we all know, don't we, that the motorcycling community, however loosely defined, has within it bonds which are, for the most part, stronger than those associated with the car driving community, the commercial vehicle community, the cycling community, to name but a few. We are not defined by geographical boundaries, but rather by a common love for and understanding of the relationships to be forged between man and machine against a background of freedom to travel our lands and individual agency. A common understanding of the dangers involved, yet a common will to take calculated risks, the better to lead a more meaningful life. And as Freddie sang, ride the wild wind. That's Freddie Mercury, not Freddie Dobbs. Ride the wild wind, it's not dangerous enough for me. There is a certain solace to be found in places like this, on bikes like these. A solace from a troubled world and a brief yet welcome extraction from the realities of living in times which have become poisoned, stained, defaced 
and where the sanctity of life has been suffocated under an ever-burgeoning pillow of power play, greed and corruption. Suffer the little children. Well, whatever it takes, eh? I'm always reminded in moments of rueful introspection that the lot of others around the world is so hideously far removed from our relatively cosseted existence here in the so-called democratised West. What would some of those poor people blighted by conflict and oppression across our planet give to enjoy the simple blissful pleasure of a motorcycle ride through the countryside in any weather? Wars are not started by people, they are started by governments and religion. Who the hell needs either? So as we ride our classically styled motorcycles through these at once beautiful yet at times foreboding landscapes, I'm reminded of the reflections documented by my father as he cycled with his pal through his beloved Yorkshire Dales against the backdrop of a looming global war in 1939. My dad, Dudley, kept a diary of his two-wheel travels with his buddy. He wrote very eloquently, even poetically, about his thoughts and feelings and populated his writings with photographs taken on an old black and white film camera. I still find that book, those photographs, those writings, truly haunting. As he did then, I fear now the end of these days at the hands of others. I will leave you with these thoughts as documented by him way back then when, like now, the times were changing. The following morning, being only 30 odd miles from home, we decided to go fishing in the River Yore. Unfortunately, the weather had changed and it was very cold, on top of which we had no luck, and so we decided to head for home. As usual, there was a headwind against us, but after having a very hearty meal at Otley, we were able to get home without feeling unduly fatigued. Both of us had tremendously enjoyed our holiday, and it had enabled us, for a short time, to forget that a world war was in progress, and that this might be one last chance of a holiday of any sort.